Okay, guys, thank you very much. That's it for today. There's just one more thing I want to talk to you about. If you could write a letter to your unpresented self about this journey and experience of living with prostate cancer, what would it be? I don't get it, mate. That was my first thought. But the question kept playing in my head. If you could write a letter to your unpresented self, Terence McKenzie, what would it be? I wouldn't write a letter. Who bloody writes a letter in 2019? Let's say it wasn't a letter. Maybe it's an email or a text message. What would you say then? What is there to say? What is there to say, right? When you haven't even told Sandra. When you haven't even told the kids. What are you gonna tell yourself about all of this? Dear Terence, no, dear Tell, dear Terry, dear Terence, dear, no, dear Terence, dear Mr. Terence, the cheapness is this. <laughs> okay, I don't know where to begin with all of this. I mean, the fact that I'm doing this. But hey, if the diary room is good enough for Big Brother, 
it's good enough for me. I mean, this is more like the diarrhea room. <laughs> I know, I know. That's a bad one. A real stinker. <laughs> if you'd have told me that I'd be here, that Terence McKenzie that never got flu in his life would be sitting on the toilet seat at 1am hiding away from his family talking to his laptop about prostate cancer I would have said that you're on something you ask any of the fellas at the garage and they'll tell you the same thing the only time Terence McKenzie ever pulled his sickie is on a Saturday and it's probably when he's had a couple of cans the night before and wasn't looking to get the public killed by a rampaging bus But to actually be ill? Proper ill? No. Never. I can't remember the last time I set foot in a GP surgery before all of this. I mean, I would have never gone in the first place if it weren't for Sandra and her, and her cheeky comment. Sorry, babes. I need to go. Be right back, yeah? It's the second time tonight already. Bloody getting on my nerves. Hey, nurse. Keep the bed warm for me, babes. Me, I soon come. And then she comes out with it. Are you pregnant? <laughs> no, for real. Because the way you keep pissing all hours of the night, you better let me know if Jamal and Renee have got a baby brother or sister on the way. Stop it. I'll be getting you pregnant when I get back. You need to see the doctor. Oh, don't start this again. You need to see the doctor. Look, do I need to see the GP every time I take a piss? You should be happy your man's blood is working so good. You need to see a doctor. No! Well, you better find someone else to get pregnant when you get back then. She wins. Okay, I'll go. Promise? Yes. Permission to go to piss now, Captain? <laughs> Hurry up. I'm waiting for you. Yes, babes. And I did keep my promise. I booked an appointment, called the surgery, and went in. You should maybe look at cutting back on your drinking. It's uh, probably nothing serious, but your partner's right. It's worth checking and running a few tests. He took some medical history. Asked if anyone in my family, like my father or brother, had prostate cancer. I said, not to my knowledge. But now when I think about it, all the symptoms? I started to wonder if my granddad had it. I remember my nan saying that before he passed, he used to go to the toilet a lot. She even talked about him being too tired to do things. I don't know whether she was talking about their business. I mean, it's not like your nan's just gonna come out and say, yeah, by the way, your granddaddy can't get to drop no more. She even talked about making him a special brew, which apparently livened him up. Sometimes, but the C word, nah, that was never mentioned. Things worth doing a DRE. A what? Digital rectal exam, pretty simple test. I insert a gloved finger into your rectum to feel for any abnormalities, lumps or bumps. It's over very quickly and you shouldn't feel much discomfort. It's all right, doctor. I'd rather not have any uh, diddling. Back there, if that's all right. I don't really appreciate your use of the word diddling, Mr. McKenzie. I'm a medical professional informing you of a potentially life-saving procedure that could help detect any early signs of a serious condition. Let's keep things respectful. I'm more than happy to bring a nurse in here if you would prefer. 
You're equally welcome to have your partner present if she's around. Look, I'm a bit of a joke, all right? It wouldn't be the first time my mouth's got me into a bit of trouble. I wasn't looking to disrespect the doctor or his sexuality. I just didn't want any, you know, intrusion. But now I'm like, nice one, Terence. You've only gone and wound at the GP. He probably thinks you're a homophobic waste of space. And now it's could prescribe you rat poison. Okay, okay, a bit dramatic, I know. But the last time I saw a doctor, I was probably in nappies. So I had no idea how this is all supposed to work. I was uncomfortable as hell when I... I just wanted out. No, it's all right, Doc. I'm sorry to offend you. I'm a regular old charmer, me. <laughs> it's quite all right. So, are you happy to proceed with the test? I think I'll leave it for now. Thanks. But then the symptoms got worse. I started peeing more. I was feeling more and more anxious. It got so bad that Sandra threatened to march me straight to the surgery if I didn't go back. So I did. He was a different doctor this time. I told her everything. She immediately said she wanted me to have a PSA test. I didn't know there was another test other than the DRE, or that the PSA was something I could ask for. The test came back at normal. And that's when it all kicked off. I got referred to the urologist, got the MRI and biopsies done. I still didn't really believe I could have prostate cancer. I'm 45, fit, strong. It just couldn't happen to someone like me. But it did. If only someone had told me one and four of us were at risk, I might have been prepared. How long have you been standing there? Long enough to enjoy the beautiful view of your full eclipse. <sighs> I 
Listen, babe, I've got something to tell you. Really? So have I, actually. Let's hear it, then. <laughs> Ladies first. I'm pregnant. Well, you're thrilled. No, babes. I'm happy. I really am. Just... Just been a long day, that's all. For real? Mm, for real. So, what were you going to tell me? Hmm? Nothing. Not important. You got the latest test results back yet? Yeah. It's all clear. All clear. That's when things started to unravel for me. I mean, mentally. People think of the physical size of cancer, but the mental, that's just as, that's just as terrifying. Things came crashing down all around. The diagnosis, the baby, It was all just too much. And my father's voice just kept playing in my head. You gotta be a man. No matter how much they try and break you down, take care of your children, put money on the table. You have to work twice as hard because of the colour of your skin. How am I supposed to man up when my body's breaking down? How am I supposed to look after Sarge and the kids when I can't even look after myself? To be honest, I don't have a clue what she's saying half the time. Feels like my head's just gonna burst with all this information. I just can't take in anymore. So I sit here and nod. She asks me a few questions. I don't really have the detailed information she needs. Just pretending everything's all right. I could do with everyone else. And please do let us know if you're going to be away or if you have any holidays planned to Jamaica with the family. Jamaica? I'm St. Lucian and Ghanaian. Yes, of course. Sorry, getting my islands mixed up. One of my regular patients is a lovely gentleman from Jamaica. He's always talking about his holidays in the sun. Gets us quite jealous. Be good to have some sun at this time of year. <clears throat> so now she's mixing me up with a Jamaican patient. Because we all look the same, right? How many of us is she seeing anyway? Probably just another number to her. That's all I am. A cancerous number. I just want to get out of here. And I did. I, I missed appointments, I missed work. My sex drive fell. That's an understatement. 
I couldn't perform. At all. So I just started quizzing me on whether I was cheating on her. So I started to lose my temper with the kids. On stupid things. So they started to stay out of my way. I was really starting to wonder if there was any point in me even carrying on. I mean, if I'd screwed things up so badly as a father and as a partner, and I couldn't even satisfy my woman, then, then, then what's the point of me carrying on? Mm -hmm. Seems like things will be much better without me. <coughs> that was until I saw the nurse again. She sees me. She actually sees me. Not just a cancer patient, but me the person. She wants to know why I'm struggling to make appointments and how I'm feeling, not just physically, but mentally too. She also cares about the support that I'm getting. I think it'd be a good idea to bring Sandra along. No. Why not? It's a bit complicated. Because of the baby? Yeah. Is there anyone else, a member of your extended family, one of your older children, or a friend? Someone who could be part of the process and just be a bit of support to get you to your appointments on time? No. It's cool. I'll be on it now. If you don't mind me asking, Terence, have you told anyone about your diagnosis? What about the male support groups? To be honest, I never went to any of the support groups. I got all the leaflets and handouts. Enough for them to start a library. But with the way I felt, I just couldn't be asked with anything. But after the nurse chatted to me about the groups and how all her patients loved them, I thought, all right, I'll give it a go. All these men were chatting about having prostate cancer and how it changed their lives. I could relate to the symptoms they had. Going to the toilet all the time, the tiredness, the sex problems, all of that. But I couldn't really connect with the group. They were talking about certain things in their lives which had nothing in common with my life or where I came from. I think I felt a bit disappointed because the one space I thought I might fit in, I just felt like, here we go again. The only black in the village. But you know what? That nurse Maria, Boy, she ain't letting up, you know. She told me about how's the support group, have you told your family yet, rare, rare, rare. When I tell her how I feel about the group, she's like, all right, give this other group in East London a try. Now I'm thinking to myself, why am I gonna trek all the way east to sit in another circle? But then I see Maria's face at my next appointment when I tell her I haven't been. Whew. That cut I'm gonna get, Nah, ain't worth it, bruv. So I say to myself, man up, Terence. Just go.
Back in the days when I grew up in Essex, before we moved to South London, we were the only non-white family in the area. I got used to it, it didn't bother me. But dealing with this, prostate cancer, it's a bit extra, you know. I just wanted support from people who could understand where I was coming from and what it was like for someone like myself living with it. Take for instance this guy here, Marcus. He told us that he can't get no rest because his WhatsApp family keeps sending him 100 prayers a day and his sister's not letting up about him going to a church for a session with the pastor. To be honest, when I do tell my mum, I know for a fact her and all my Ghanaian aunties are going to be blocking up my phone with WhatsApp messages. That's the community, man. They get on your last nerve, but you love them. I didn't realise till I went to the group how much I needed to have that experience. Those types of conversations, that kind of space. A safe space. It's me again, and we've, uh, we've upgraded. Yeah, I've got a divorce. From the toilet seat. I'm done with a cold bum. I'm actually done, full stop. This is it. My last video diary. My very last one. Laptop therapy is real, I tell ya. And cheap, you know. <laughs> But seriously, being able to get all this stuff off my chest, it was, it was necessary. The guys in the group are right. You need to have a conversation with yourself because it's a lot. Prostate cancer is a lot. Well, things are getting clearer now. I had a chat with the guys at work and finally let them know. They were really cool about it. They said I should take all the time I needed and that they'll support me in any way they can. I haven't told the family yet, but I'm about to. I can't be shutting them out. We're all in this together. I finally realised that. Hey, I'll look after. Hmm? Oh, you in a minute, babes. <laughs> Thank you.